Chocolate, a magic world, a subtle flavor, a food to caress a sweet tooth. Cocoa processing and the know-how of a specialist confectioner are the foundation of a chocolate's delectable taste. Let's discover this fascinating world of chocolate. Cacao Barry presents From Cocoa to Chocolate. The history of chocolate from its origins to the present day. Christopher Columbus was the first European to discover cocoa. The Mayans and the Aztecs used the beans as currency, a slave being worth 10 cocoa beans. They also made a drink highly valued for its aphrodisiac properties. The drink was called chocolatil. Fernando Cortes first introduced cocoa to Spain. He used to say when you eat chocolate, you can travel all day without getting tired or feeling hungry. In 1615, the French court discovered chocolate thanks to the Spanish Infanta, who had a passion for it. Chocolate became a fashion. Meanwhile, chocolate making was improving and industrializing to fulfill rising demands. In 1824, Meunier opened the first chocolate factory. In 1842, Charles Barry founded Coco Barry. In 1870, Peters discovered milk chocolate. Cocoa on a world scale. The cocoa tree is cultivated in approximately 35 tropical countries. In less than a century, production has increased from 115,000 metric tons a year to 2 million metric tons in 1987. 80% of world production is supplied by six countries, four of them are West African, the Ivory Coast, Ghana, Cameroon and Nigeria. These producers account for 52% of world cocoa production. In factories, the Coco Barry Group is one of the world's cocoa leaders. Five of the Coco Barry plants are located in cocoa producing countries. Coco Barry is therefore well situated to carefully select the best supply of cocoa beans. The Barry Group transforms each year between 150 and 200,000 tons of cocoa beans. Going on a journey, the cocoa route. The journey begins in Africa, where we discover the cocoa tree. Cocoa only grows in warm, humid climates. The cocoa tree is fragile, requiring great care and attention throughout its lifetime. Damage can result from wind, too much sunshine, disease or pests. When young, the cocoa tree has few leaves which easily become dry and fall off, leaving insufficient shade. Planters have traditionally combined cocoa cultivation with vegetable and fruit farming. The banana tree, for example, is often used since it grows rapidly and its large leaves protect the cocoa from wind and sun. The trees are regularly treated against parasites and harmful insects. It takes from five to six months for a pod to mature. When ripe, a pod is roughly 25 centimeters long and weighs 500 grams and is ready for harvest. The color of the pod indicates whether the fruit is mature. Young pods are green or purple and turn yellow or orange late in the development. In Africa, cocoa is harvested in two crops a year. The main crop between September and December and the smaller intermediary crop between May and June. One to seven days after harvest, the good pods are cracked open with a small stick. Rotten pods are unusable. 
Inside are the seeds, wrapped in a sweet white pulp. The seeds are sorted and rotten pods put aside. in wooden slat boxes with banana leaf covers to ferment. Proper fermentation takes five to seven days. Seeds are stirred at regular intervals so that the air can circulate. When harvested, the seed is light purple. Proper fermentation changes the color from purple to rich, deep brown. Unproperly fermented cocoa has a sour taste not fit for making quality chocolate. So fermentation plays a key role in the development of a fine chocolate flavor. The seeds are sun-dried. Drying is very important as it further enhances the cocoa bouquet and reduces humidity to prevent mold development. Some farmers use industrial dryers which blow warm air over the seeds. The vast majority of cocoa is still sun-dried, the traditional way. Depending on the weather, sun-drying can take from three to seven days. Only now can these seeds be called cocoa beans. Bonjour. The cocoa berry buyer chooses only the best beans. Mr. Chocolate's Lessons Harvesting Harvesting the Pods Opening the pods. Seed fermentation and drying. Cocoa beans. Purchasing control. International standards are set to describe the quality of cocoa beans. Quality is determined on samples. Beans are sliced open and analyzed in order to be classified. Cocoa beans are then ocean shipped to the factory where they will be transformed into chocolate. From cocoa beans to chocolate, cocoa processing. When cocoa beans arrive at the factory, their quality is controlled by the laboratory. Only now can chocolate making begin. The beans are cleaned, dust and waste is removed. The cocoa is then warmed and cracked in winnowers. These separate the nibs from the unusable shell and germ. Effective winnowing, keeping only pure nibs, is very important to make good chocolate. The shells and germs are discarded and burnt. 
The nibs are roasted to further enhance the cocoa flavor and to remove any sourness. Depending upon the desired end product, the nib may now be alkalinized or move on directly to be ground. Each processing stage is an accurate operation whose duration and importance varies with the type of cocoa bean and the desired cocoa flavor. Once roasted, the beans are roughly ground. The resulting paste is then further refined in mills, creating a dark, smooth liquid called cocoa mass, also known as liquor or paste. This liquor is either directly used as a basic ingredient in chocolate, or it is pressed to separate the liquid element, cocoa butter and the dry particles, cocoa cake. Pressing can be regulated to select a desired butter content in the cake. The butter is now treated to remove the odor and is decolored by a natural process. This butter is another primary chocolate ingredient. The cake is in turn industrially ground and sifted to make cocoa powder. Mr. Chocolate's Lessons Processing of Cocoa Beans Cocoa beans, cleaning, winnowing, roasting, grinding, milling and liquor pressing. The liquor butter semi-finished cocoa products are used as key cocoa ingredients of chocolate. Cake and butter, grinding and sifting, powder. From cocoa to chocolate, chocolate making. At the chocolate factory in Milan, the first step is to blend the cocoa liquor with sugar and milk powder if making milk chocolate. A computer precisely determines the right quantity of each raw material and guarantees the consistency of the product. To smooth the granular texture caused by sugar particles, the mixture goes to a pre-grinder and then to a five-cylinder refiner, which flattens and reduces the size of sugar and cocoa particles to create a silky texture. The solids are now undetectable. Cocoa Barry puts a high value on this processing stage because a well-ground curvature has a silky texture and delectable taste. Conching is the next step. In Milan, we take the time to do things right. Long and proper conching is necessary to extract remaining humidity, sourness, and to completely develop a full chocolate flavor. First, we conch dry to aerate the cocoa liquor, sugar, milk, and mixed flavors, and make chocolate particles even smoother. Next is the liquid conching, where cocoa butter is added, finally creating liquid chocolate. Each of Cocoa Barry's chocolate formulas are tested in the laboratory to determine the optimal conching period. The research department works closely with production to assure that the industrialized chocolate properties fulfill the original objectives. After conching, the chocolate is either stored in liquid form to be shipped in tank trucks to industrial customers, or it is molded in bars or in wafers specially designed to a confectioner's needs.